My name is Laura and you are watching The Paranormal Scholar, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the darkest paranormal entities claimed to exist. Creatures so foul that there is truly little worse that you could be unfortunate enough to encounter. Before we begin, I would like to take a quick moment to thank Bright Sellers for kindly sponsoring today's video. I find that on an evening, most especially in winter when the fire is on, that there is nothing more homely than curling up with a good book and a glass of crisp citrusy white wine. Which is why I love Bright Cellars, a monthly wine club which matches your taste preferences to a curated selection of top quality wines guaranteed to delight and sent straight to your door. You begin by taking their online quiz so as to discover your unique taste profile. The questions are quick and fun and include your chocolate preferences, how you take your tea, and your preferred way to drink wine. Then you are matched with four unique wines from around the world that you are most likely to love. My palette was matched with fruity whites with crisp green apple flavours and zesty notes, including a Californian Pinot Grigio and a cool climate Austrian white. And this is just the start of the Bright Cellars wine experience. There is no need to venture to the store with your unique curated wine box being delivered directly to you. And it is not merely convenient, but enlightening also. Each bottle comes with its own wine education card, outlining the tasting notes, suggested pairings, and origin. A touch which I think is truly splendid, and far superior to relying on the label alone as you do when shopping for wine at the store. And with the holiday season fast approaching, it is arguably the best time of year to brush up on your wine knowledge and share it along with the delightful wine itself with your loved ones. You can start your own wine experience today by clicking the link in the description box and taking the seven question quiz. And Bright Sellers is giving my viewers a very generous 60% off their first four bottle box for those who are interested and who would like to support my channel. So be sure to take a look at that discount link. The Native Americans of the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota nurture a specific belief, that a dangerous skeletal entity stalks the night, taking control of people's minds, leading them to their end, so as to then wear their souls as macabre trophies on its arms. This creature, long-limbed and mouthless, is called Walking Sam, although it is perhaps more widely known as the Tall Man a dark spirit which, terrifyingly, appears in mythologies both modern and archaic all over the world. According to Native American legend, Walking Sam's preferred habitat is the woods, and it is here that the lanky figure is said to have lured many, including a large number of teenagers, in February 2015. It was decided amongst them that they would head out to a wooded area within the Pine Ridge Reservation and, equipped with nothing but long lengths of rope, commit the unthinkable together. Fortunately, a local pastor called John Tubals became aware of their intentions and was able to intercept them. Convincing them to go home, a tragedy of terrible proportions was avoided. As word spread about what had almost come to pass, many members of the tribe whispered that Walking Sam was to blame and that his ability to manipulate, and indeed enslave, the minds of his victims had drawn the teenagers to the trees which had very almost become their place of death. In the years since, it is said that there have been other supernatural attempts at engendering similar tragedies, with Chris Carey, a minister who works with young people living on the reservation, having spoken about the tall man entity in relation to depression and suicide. And certainly, the situation has become so bad for South Dakota's Pine Ridge Reservation that states of emergencies are regularly declared by local leaders. In 2015, after 17 attempts were made in a single month, and again as recently as August 2020. In that year, authorities reported that 177 attempts were made by 14 to 32 year olds in a six month period. Tragically, nine of these were successful. What is causing such a high propensity for this type of tragedy is of course up for debate, 
However, many do take the existence of Walking Sam very seriously, with some even suggesting that the monstrous entity has the ability to insert itself onto the internet, revealing its spindle-like form and luring its victims that way. All of this is terrifying on its own. However, the Walking Sam Toolman phenomenon becomes all the more unnerving when one realises its parallels with other alleged paranormal entities. Commonly described as hat wearing, Walking Sam can be said to be similar to the Hat Man, another tall, long limbed, dark, mouthless figure which is said to seek human souls. Similar again is the Slender Man. Although this lanky, faceless humanoid is known to have been invented in 2009, its physical resemblance, not to mention its wood-dwelling inclinations and ability to control the minds of its victims, does make one pause for thought. If the tall man is a real entity, could it exist within our collective consciousness, with this innate awareness having birthed the creation of Slender Man within fiction? After all, it can be said to be curious that so many people find the imagery associated with the Slender Man, Hat Man and the Tall Man terrifying. Why is this? Is it perhaps because we, unconsciously, know this creature is real? Historically, there is also the tale of the Pied Piper of Hamlin, another hat-wearing figure associated with luring young people away through the use of magical mind manipulation. In one version of the legend, the children are led into water, where they are all drowned. In Dutch mythology, there is the Lange Man, translating to Long or Tall Man. This shadowy figure is once again associated with the woods, and is claimed to target young people, most especially children. So what is going on? Is Walking Sam of the Pine Ridge Reservation a disturbing yet contained phenomenon? Or does it hint at something even more sinister, that a tall, featureless, long-limbed, mind-manipulating entity has been encountered all across the globe, and that different cultures, both new and old, have grown up around it, leading us to fear both the dark and the forest, lest we fall under the terrible influence of the tall man? In the darkest, densest part of the Congo rainforest of Central Africa, there is rumoured to exist a vicious, dwarf-like creature called the Iloko. Believed to be the spirits of the people who once lived in the area, these monstrous beings are said to act maliciously due to the unfinished business which they have with the material world. Not only that, they, similar to the Kurupira of Brazilian folklore, will do all that is necessary to protect the forest and its natural treasures from the greed of man, no matter how dark and terrible. Indeed, perhaps the most well-known aspect of the Iloko's personality is its penchant for consuming its victims, and given that these creatures are the spiritual remnants of the once living, this makes the Iloko a cannibal. Quite possibly the ultimate taboo, the cannibalism of the Iloko makes it an atrocious entity to encounter. Hairless, and instead covered in the grass of the forest which it guards, the Iloko is said to be able to open its mouth wide enough to admit an entire human body, whole, dead, or alive. It is also described as having long, sharp claws and piercing eyes, and despite being smaller than a human adult, has incredible strength, and thus can easily overpower its prey. Of course, given its professed savage intentions, there are very few who claim to have actually survived an encounter with an Iloko. Hunters, being those who commonly enter the dense rainforest it calls home, are amongst those most likely to report an interaction. One traditional tale describes how a hunter and his wife were plagued by an Iloko during their time living in the forest. Whilst the hunter was away, a strange creature is said to have appeared at the door of their hut. It requested food from the hunter's wife, and she offered it a meal. It did not, however, wish to eat the food which she offered. For days, it is said to have returned, sometimes shape-shifting into the appearance of a child increasingly hungry and increasingly aggressive, until one day, when the hunter returned, all that he found of his wife was a pile of bones, picked clean 
of all flesh. In another version of the story, the Iloko ate a portion of the woman's arm, and then later, her liver, leaving her too weak to survive. The hunter, so it seems, should have stayed away. The forest was not his to profit from, and so the Iloko took from him his truest treasure. Deserts are a notorious haunt for devilry in folklore. In Christianity, they are the places where one may encounter the most formidable evils, most famously when, in the Bible, Jesus spent forty days in the Judean desert and was tempted by Satan. Beyond Christian tradition, the barren and desolate wonder of the desert continues, and has imbued all cultures with tales of dark entities. In the Great Sandy Desert of Australia, Aboriginal people believe there lurks a particularly heinous being, which they call Mamu. This demon is thought to be able to change shape, and has been encountered as both inanimate objects and as a friendly traveller who seeks to accompany anyone passing through the desert. Once attached to its prey, it is whispered that it is only a matter of time before the Mamu reveals its true form and then devours them. In one Aboriginal story, a hunter who had caught an animal and was carrying it over his shoulder is said to have spotted a stone blade lying in the sand. He picked it up, and some time later, whilst he was camping, used the stone to sharpen his spear. Unbeknownst to him, however, the stone was actually a mamu in disguise. Before his spear could be sharpened, the demon slit his throat. And so it was a fortuitous hunt. Not only did the Mamu have the man to feast on, but also the game which he had caught that day. Encounters such as these are commonplace in the desert cultures of Australia. While accounts of the Mamu's true appearance vary, they are often described as tall, humanoid monsters, possessing large, protruding eyes and fang-like teeth. Rumoured to lurk underground, they can be said to be the ideal bogeyman used to scare children into behaving. And yet, to many, they are still genuinely considered to be the very real incarnation of evil. For example, in 1956, when an Aboriginal community witnessed an atomic bomb being tested, they believed that the mushroom cloud was caused by the wrath of the Mamu in response to their underground settlements being disturbed. Such is the terror which they inspire. And so, the Mamu occupies a prominent position within indigenous folklore. Anthropologists have documented many tales of alleged encounters with Mamu demons in the desert, and, in recent times, a sort of syncretism can be said to have occurred whereby some Aboriginal people believe that Christian prayers and invocations can help to protect them from this demon. It is also believed that if one wanders the desert with a dog, and it barks angrily at some one or a seemingly ordinary object, then they have spotted a Mamu. And with the great sandy desert encompassing an area of 110,000 square miles, double the size of the state of Florida, it is impossible to say for certain precisely what creatures may or may not lurk there, most especially when one considers how the Mamu is said to live in underground homes. Whatever the case may be, there is no doubt that in many people's minds, deserts are fearsome places, where the supernatural not only resides, but thrives. The succubus is a demonic entity said to appear at night, often in the dreams of men so as to seduce, manipulate, and eventually devour their life force. According to religious traditions, the most famous of the succubi is Lilith, the first woman created by God. Made at the same moment and from the same dust as Adam, she is said to have fled from the Garden of Eden after refusing to be subservient to him. Thereafter, she supposedly cavorted with hordes of demon lovers, or the archangel Samuel, depending upon which Hebrew text is consulted. Either way, these ceaseless illicit couplings are said to have produced countless offspring. 
In ancient Mesopotamian religion and Jewish tradition, these creatures are called Lilitu or Lilin, and are believed to have followed in their mother's footsteps in regards to their insatiable desire for fornication. It is claimed that such succubi manifest as beautiful temptresses during nocturnal visits, and thus hide their true demonic nature from the man with whom they then proceed to have relations. Over time, if these interactions are sustained, the men are said to wither away, physically, mentally, and even spiritually. And according to such mythology, women are far from immune to these deceptive encounters, with incubi, the male equivalent of succubus, appearing in women's bedrooms to do the same. Although the consumption of their victim's vital force is one aim of the incubi, there is rumoured to be a second the conception of a child of the night. A human-demon hybrid, these beings are also known as Cambion, and are thought to be hideous, infernal things, insatiable as infants, constantly crying for their mother's milk, and wicked as adults, possessing an infinite capacity for evil. In Irish legend, and indeed wider European belief, Cambians can be said to share folklore with the Changeling, a human-like creature said to have been snuck into the crib of a human child by malevolent fairies. In medieval Scandinavia, it was trolls and not fairies who were believed to have been responsible for this act of deception. Curiously, and perhaps sinisterly, crossovers continue into the present day with there being notable similarities between interactions between humans and succubi and incubi, and those described during alleged alien abductions. Often, self-described alien abductees report sexual encounters with extraterrestrials, either explicitly or nominally in the form of doctor-like extraterrestrials being interested in the reproductive organs of their abducted subjects. In some sensational cases, human-alien hybrids are said to be the product of such unearthly unions. Similar to the Changeling, these creatures are described as having black eyes, which is why they are sometimes referred to as black-eyed children in modern accounts. Chillingly, one alien abduction testimony, which comes from a British city councillor called Simon Parks, reveals that far from being solely interested in his physical body, the alien being with whom he claims to have associated was interested in him because of what's inside, namely his soul. Such an interest can be said to be similar to traditional reports of succubi, suggesting that the phenomenon is more complex than it first appears and that the demonic Lilitu of ancient religious belief may just be unearthly in quite a literal way. Every creed on Earth has had a belief in some sort of primordial god of chaos. Chaos gods are not so much beings of mayhem, although they may thrive from it, but rather are ancient, all-powerful entities whose purpose is to sink all existence into darkness, and thus take us back into the void. Accordingly, in some Judeo-Christian belief structures, chaos has been identified with Satan. However, in some sense this is an incorrect similitude for the devil desires to torment your soul within the confines of his realm of hell. This is not what chaos hopes to achieve, and so a more accurate analogy could be said to be that of the Leviathan, a serpentine dragon-like entity which is said to devour the souls of the damned, rendering a person non-existent entirely. In Gnostic belief, all existence is encapsulated by a giant Leviathan biting its own tail and generating all the evil in existence. When one perishes, the soul must pass through the seven realms of heaven. If they do not succeed, then the Leviathan will consume them. In this way, one may see preference in living in hell, than in the mouth of the all-devouring, all-evil-creating Leviathan. Intriguingly, Norse mythology has a similar incarnation of chaos the World Serpent. 
Like the Gnostic Leviathan, this serpent encapsulates the world, eating its own tail as it does. When it releases itself, it is foretold that Ragnarok, Norse mythology's version of the apocalypse, will begin. Similar again is Apophis, the ancient Egyptian deity who was the opponent of light, a great serpent associated with chaos. In fact, it is quite astonishing just how many manifestations of chaos as a serpent there are, both worldwide and across time. From the ancient Mesopotamians, to Hindus, to various Native American tribes, to the ancient Greeks. Even the serpent in the Garden of Eden can be said to show how this creature consistently appears as a metaphorical embodiment of chaos and evil. An absolute power of darkness, chaos, is thus a cultural universal. Ancient Greeks believed that chaos was the first thing ever to exist, and that from this void all existence was brought into being, thus making chaos the very basis of reality. Existing prior to creation, it is fundamental to everything, with light, its opposite, coming afterwards. And surprisingly, present day scientists may not wholly disagree with this ancient Greek belief. In the last few decades, science has pushed the notion that there exists a form of mysterious matter known as dark matter. Connected to this is dark energy, a force which is hypothesized to affect everything and thus influence everything in existence in the universe. Scientists happily agree that more is unknown than known about this enigmatic form of energy, but they have proposed that a colossal 68% of the universe is dark energy. Dark matter is thought to make up about 27%, which means that the rest, everything on Earth, everything ever observed with all of our instruments, all normal matter, adds up to less than 5% of the universe. It is also speculated that before the Big Bang, the emergence of light, there was only dark matter. And so, biases aside, all of this sounds rather like what the ancients already knew. Dark existed before light, and from that darkness, that chaos, came reality. Even more bizarre is how scientists hypothesize that since the Big Bang, gravity and dark energy have engaged in a cosmic tug of war. Gravity pulls galaxies closer together, dark energy pushes them apart. Whether the universe is expanding or contracting depends upon which force dominates, gravity or dark energy. Once again, this all sounds rather familiar the original cosmic battle between light and dark, good and evil. And thus, with so little known about dark matter and the dark energy which directs it, there is ample room for speculation. Science is quite literally in the dark, and it rather strangely appears that ancient and persisting belief in chaos has some measure of truth to it. And so, just how far can we run with this notion? Is it then true that all evil stems from chaos, and that, just as the ancients proposed, there is a cognizance in that darkness, directing all the things which we call demons, spirits, tall men, mamu and fairies, all manner of paranormal entities, at the command of a dark consciousness, so unimaginably vast and powerful that we, as those who came before us, can only call it chaos. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the paranormal. And I am very happy to announce that my premiere watch page for my exclusive two-week showing of In Search of the Dead, free of charge here on YouTube, is now live. So click through to the link in the description and set a reminder for Saturday the 20th of November when it will be released. Equally, you can sign up to my email newsletter via paranormalscholar.com and be notified of that and all of my new uploads. In the meantime, if you haven't already, why not watch another video such as the one suggested on screen now? Or check out my Bright Sellers discount link in the description. Thank you again. Until next time. <laughs>